Okay, we're recording, so you can go ahead. Okay, today is April 4th, and this is the Joint Capital Planning Committee meeting. Um, and my, my first order, other than calling us to order, seeing that we have a quorum at four o'clock, is to make sure everyone can hear and be heard. So I'll just call out names on those. I see them on the screen. Bob? Present. Lee? Lee, just, uh, we can't hear you. I can see your mouth moving. Last Zoom call I was on, starting at two, had the same thing happen. Okay, well, let's try Eugene, because we still can't hear you. Um, oh, I could hear Lee. Oh, you can I'm hear here. Lee? Lee? Yeah. I could. Say I could not. I couldn't. I could not. Neither could I. I think I heard her. I heard. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, yes. yes I do. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, and I'm we here. can hear you and Anna. <laughs> yes, present. Okay. So we are we are at a point where we're uh, working with recommendations that'll go in the report. And Sandy has listened to the conversations that we've been having, as well as he's had additional conversations with staff and department heads, and is. Uh, sent us a revised five-year summary plan and a revised list of projects for both the FY25 year and all the way through 29, and it miraculously balances. So in in FY25, so Sandy, I I you know I went through to figure out what had changed and what had moved, but I think it would be good for you to kind of walk us through it. Um, and the other thing is, um, I started to do a draft of the report, so people just know the schedule we have. Um, today, we turn to our own recommendations, and then, in theory, next week, we review the draft that I write, and Anna, Anna checks and reworks, and we make it final, um, because that's our last meeting. And I realize that we're under, that's a quick turnaround time, but I think depending on how efficient we are today, it's doable. Um, thanks to what Sandy did. Um, so, uh, so Sandy, it's the the time is all yours. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, yes, we do have a balanced plan, uh, both in FY twenty five and overall over the five years. There are in future years some deficits in some years and some surpluses in others. Um, so just bottom line, we're, we've gotten to where we need to be. Um, I have heard feedback from some of you. Um, there's still one thing I need to look at, so there might be a little bit of a tweak to come. Uh, I will get to that in a minute. Um, but I thought what I would do is first just talk generally about what I did to get things in balance. And then... Um, show you the specific numbers and show you the, the pages. Uh, we had sent out a draft version earlier today and then um, I was double checking some of the debt numbers and realized I needed to change some of those. So those ended up moving numbers around a little bit in the out years, but not in FY25. And it brought the overall deficit actually down some. All right. Let's just start. Um, I'd say the major things that I had to do uh, for FY25 was move certain projects out of FY25 into future years and or change them from being paid for in cash to being paid for by debt. Um, I think particularly when I did that in the out years, those are, uh, a part of a plan at this point. In other words, this doesn't mean that in FY26 or 27, we absolutely have to borrow for, you know, the Crocker School roof. But it means to have something reasonably in balance now, that's what we're planning to do. And then a year from now, when you guys are all going through this, you can relook at it, see what resources you have, see what projects have come forward or dropped off and make new decisions about how you want to finance things. Um, so that's what I did. There were other things that um, 
Some of you had questions about, for example, the sidewalk plow. I pushed that out two years because um, just in talking to people, I got the sense that DPW had put that there as a placeholder, not that they absolutely had to have one right away. So that got pushed off two years. Same thing with the North Amherst um, traffic study. Uh, there, it's pretty clear that um, that was both placeholder and probably a little bit too early even to be a placeholder um, for a variety of reasons, um, some of which has to do with maybe we wouldn't have to spend money for outside consultants for something like that and actually do the engineering in-house, which Amherst often does. And some of it is just the consensus about what that project's going to look like and how we try to line that project up and spend money or do work on it in-house with the town's plans at some point to apply for another MassWorks grant, which will substantially pay for any changes that go on up there. So anyway, so there are some things like that that were just premature. There were other things like the um, tablets, at the Civil War Memorial tablets, $150,000 that when I talked to uh, this guy named Bob Parent, who I don't know if any of you know, I, I don't think I've ever met him. Uh, he, <laughs> uh, he's doing some part-time work for the town around a lot of cap capital management projects. And he was in touch with the construction company for the library that told him, A, we didn't need extra money to, to kind of fortify or strengthen the place where those tablets were gonna go. They're very heavy, but they're going to end up, as it turns out, on the bottom floor so that they don't need to reinforce the flooring and so forth, which is a concern. And that they, in fact, had already designed some space so we didn't have to spend money on that sort of thing. So I put that off a couple of years, figuring that uh, also what he said, we weren't going to be able to move those in there until the library was really fairly much constructed that you know, we wouldn't be moving them in there in the midst of construction. So I put 50,000 in in an out year just in case we need something. So there were various things like that. Um, and so now I'm gonna start to share the latest and real version of this. Um, you are all learning something that I first learned when I started doing budgeting for the city of Newton back in 1999, I think it was, that um, anytime you start talk, talk about budgets, at particularly this time of the year, you just wait a day and the numbers change mm -hmm. until they just have to be finished. It is also something that I teach people, and you know, I teach a budget course at UMass, and I tell them there are two kinds of numbers. There are real numbers, and there are budget numbers. And those <laughs> are not necessarily the same thing. So things do change. So, Lee, Lee, did you have just, your hand up? Yeah, because I'm the minute taker, so I have self-interest in this. I'm going to take notes, but w will this version be posted to us so I can print it out again tomorrow Absolutely. if I need to? Yes, yes. thank you. Yes. Thank you. I, I thought it would. I just wanted to make sure. Kathy thank and you. I touched base, and she thought it would be better to just go through it now. Agreed. Agreed. So I'm going to start to share my screen. All right, so you can see this now. Where am I? Sorry. Can I, you all see that it says final draft? Yep. And, yeah, okay. And we can, and what you just did to make it a little bit bigger probably is, I can see it fine, but just it's probably, that's that? Oh, so this is different from what's in the packet. This is, yes. It's, okay. So, okay. Okay. So, so I will point there, out a down in the corner, it says four, four. Yeah, that's that's why I say that. Yep. And what changed, Sandy will tell you, I okay. looked at it quickly. It's FY26 in the later years that changed, right. it's, at least from my quick look at it. So yes, it's these numbers that changed. 25 really didn't change. I always kept that in balance. And um, so we have $374,000 deficit for 26, a small deficit in 27. We actually have surpluses that get fairly big in 28 and 29, which means the plan overall has a um, surplus of uh, $451,000. Um, we could, 
um, get rid of that surplus by, for example, there are a couple of projects that are on the plan, which I will point out for FY29 that are currently down as being borrowed. One of them is for $400,000, for example. And so if I didn't borrow that and use cash instead, then we'd be pretty much even. So uh, I, uh, you know, part of it is the feedback I'm eager to get from you as to, you know, just how balanced you'd like to see this. Um, all right. So um, this is just how it looks. I will stop now and ask if people have any questions about these numbers, but then I'm going to go into the list of all the projects and you can see where things are. So Sarah, I see you have your hand up. Yes, thank you. So, well, I'm using my cursor, but nobody sees it. The number that we need to focus on for today, am I right in thinking it's new projects, 4,136548, that's what we need to whittle the list down to in order to be Yes, I mean, balanced. really, it's this zero number here at the very bottom left. Yeah. Um, zero means that um, you're in balance, that, that there's no surplus or deficit, you're, you're balanced, that all the resources up here, including you know tax money and CPA and state funds and so forth, match all the spending that's down here. So right. resources, expenses, they have to come out to zero. But the thing we, the only thing this group has any control over is new projects, right? Or is that not true? Yes, that's true. Okay. Thank um, you. Yes. Uh, okay. And and if, if I could jump in, Sarah, when when Sandy says that the, that 4 million, 100, 1, 4.1 million is cash projects. So what he's done on his list is says the $900,000 chiller is going to be borrowing. So it's not taking anything out of FY25. So if you look down the project list, Bob was asking Sandy, it the project list totals six million, you know, if you add them all up. But some of them don't hit the the immediate fiscal year because you borrow the money and then you start paying the debt does, right. does that make sense so that's right that's trying to reconcile those two numbers um right yeah. so we need to be tracking the cat but if we decide okay we'll borrow something we'll do some we'll fund a project for fy25 through some borrowing is that going to change a number in this first column or we're not going to um, yes, let's say there was, let's say we were going to spend a hundred thousand dollars on a giant widget for the town because the town really needs a widget. Um, and we said, okay, we're going to borrow for it instead. That would mean that in FY25, all, all of a sudden we'd have a surplus of a hundred thousand dollars because we're not paying cash in FY25. But in 26, 27, 28, and 29, the deficits would go up or the surpluses would go down because you'd have debt service payments in the future. So there wouldn't be any debt service in FY25 for any project that we decide we want. Yeah, FY25. because the, the town can sells its debt late enough in the fiscal year so that we don't have a debt payment during right. that fiscal year. Okay, okay, thank you. The, the other thing just on trying to do what Bob was doing just before we met, officially met, um, is that 841,000, the state aid road, is um, real spending. It's just not a new town project, you know, so that that's cash spending. It's coming in. So when you, excuse me, I think I'm speaking right. So the 4.136 at, gets added to the 841 as spent cash spending during the year so the the his column his new column for 25 does add to the same column we're looking at here is is the other way to think about it yep okay of all, the, other, of all the specific projects yeah any other questions so far otherwise i'm going to go to the sheets i had 
only one, um, Sandy, and it's not about projects. So it's about projected debt. So maybe we can come back to it. It's the Jones Library. Um, it's um, the the ban. At some point, we have to do some short term, depending on when when the money is coming in from the library uh, trustees and grants. So when I don't know whether you've accounted for it yet, I did see you've accounted for the R15.8 million dollar borrowing. That's clear, but that um thing called ban b a n is just a constant 50 all the way across and so i just i that's my question is that a, is that correct it, it again it wouldn't affect this year um so yes. it's it's a different year so um it would affect the out years and i don't know which out years <laughs> yeah uh, and neither do i which is reason one reason i didn't add anything so with the library there is uh, town money, then there's state money, and then there's trustee money, three big pools of money. Um, the state money will come in as reimbursement. So we have to start spending our money first, and then the, the board of library commissioners will start to give us its grant and so forth. And then at some point, um, the trustee money will come in and how and when that is going to come in is not set in stone at this point. It may be that the town would have to borrow money on a short-term basis, a, a bond anticipation note, or in this case, it would actually be probably a, a dam, a donation anticipation note, um, where so that the town would have to borrow some money until the trustees could move money into the project. Um, the town would have to do that because you have to pay the contractor, you know, they don't like to wait. Um, you have to pay them as they do their work and they pay if they're their employees and pay for their, their supplies and so forth. Um, and it isn't clear how quickly the trustees can um, come up with their money. However, that's not to say they, they may say, hey, wait a minute, stock market is doing great, or we just got a lot more donations than we expected, we have plenty of money, and the town won't have to do that borrowing. I don't know that yet. Somebody, you guys will all have to figure that out some next year. That's where we are with that. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to go to the next page, unless anybody has more questions. Um. This, I realize, is small, so I'm going to enhance this some. Can you read that? Yeah, you see I can. Everyone should shout out whether they can read it or, or can't read it, I guess, would be. I can see it. Is, it, is that see okay it. with it? I can see it. Yeah. If you could make it too. bigger, I would Let's like it this. bigger, but it, uh, that, that's better. Thank you. Okay. This does some, so I'm going to hide the department some, and so... We'll see how this works. Um, if this does somewhat remind me of it, when I worked in the state house and they were testing the um, the uh, PE system or uh, PA system, excuse me, where they would which they would use to call members when it was time for a vote, and it would come in all our offices. We could hear it, and um, they said, "If you cannot hear this, please call the office." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so these are the projects. So some of the things I did uh, were different from what you saw in the original were that um, I talked to Jeremiah a lot about the condition of our, our roofs and about what um, what might be need to, to be done when. In his original ask, he had $500,000 in FY25 and then increasing numbers in the future. Um, and one of the things I just did is I said, okay, it's a good aspiration to increase your spending in the future. However, for the purposes of this, I'm just gonna spend the same amount every year. If in the future, it becomes apparent that there is some roof that really needs uh, more work done or so forth, then maybe you know in 27 or 28 or whatever, you can boost that amount. But um, also, since this 
roof item was really new as a five-year plan in the capital plan, from what I could tell. I think increasing the number you're going to spend every year uh, is, is a little premature. So I did it. I, we had enough money to spend cash in FY25. So I did that. And then I assumed we would borrow in the future. Again, I think a year from now, you're going to look at your overall financial situation, determine whether you're actually going to borrow this money or, or pay cash or some combination. And again, it's going to depend on how big that roof project is that year. Um, same thing with the chiller replacement. Their original ask there was $800,000, but talking with Jeremiah, it was apparent that that number was a little bit old. So I put in 900,000. When we get the final price for the chiller, we will borrow up to 900, you know, whatever it actually costs. Um, so if it's cheaper, we'll borrow cheaper uh, or lesser amount. All these other things, uh, the roof replacement uh, at the fire station, the flooring at the fire department, uh, and town hall flooring replacement, all are the same as was in the plan. Sandy, if uh, you could slow down, Sarah had a question on one um, one of the items. Sarah, do you want to mention it? Because it's one we actually didn't. Yeah. Have well, yeah. the shed, the shed, the Munson Library shed, and then yes. somebody told me it was put off for a year, but it's listed in twenty five. So, so when I asked Jeremiah, because he didn't talk about it, and if you saw his pictures, I said, yeah. Have you move that from this year. And my memory, I'd have to look at the minutes or his, he said, yes. So I see it's on here. So um, so it's a question rather than is it actually gone from this year? Because we didn't hear about it. Okay. And it yeah, wasn't, I did talk it to him about it because I had a question about what the heck it was because I didn't remember. And he yeah. just explained that the sheds that they had were old and leaky and they have, um, you'd say, store their You know how he gave here. us pictures of everything and he had a list? That one was missing. You know, oh. he didn't. And it was it was on the initial list, but it was missing from his presentation. So it's possible he decided it doesn't need to be done this year. So... Well, again, so when I talked to him about it this last week, I asked him about it, and it was a it was a it's a fairly small thing. So I mean, we could put it off or not put it off, depending on what we want to do, or um, and if we do, then we'll have some sort of a surplus in twenty five, and then have to decide what we want to do about that. Um, but I I got the impression it's a, something that he really would like to have done at some point in the future. And since it was small, I just kept it in this year. But if the could you, committee could wants you to move him, it, we... could you have him send us a paragraph then, so we know? <laughs> <what> we... <laughs> okay. So just at least we feel like we we did a kind of review of it. I agree. It's such a small number. Um, yeah. Okay. Sarah, does that make sense to you? Yes, but I actually have a <laughs> have a larger question. If I get so, I maybe I misunderstand what's going on. Are we? supposed to be deciding during this meeting what projects need to be cut or is what we're looking at for FY25 is balanced? It's balanced. You may say, Sandy, your recommendation makes no sense to me. I want to do something oh, different. Okay. But okay. This is so my attempt to give you a, uh, a working plan and then get your feedback in case there's something about it you don't like. Okay, so the reason that the grand total at the bottom is more than $4.1 million, which was on the first page as new projects, is that in this yellow column includes borrowed amounts. Is that right? It, yeah, and so it, it's okay. includes, And it includes $841,000 right, for the money from the state. So okay, that, I, thought, I thought we were having to come in and decide. <laughs> I've been busy crossing things off in my mind. So, <laughs> so the... Think of it this way. Well, this the is yellow, good news. Thank you. <laughs> the yellow line total is the size of the house you're buying. Mm -hmm. The first sheet shows your mortgage payment every year. So yep. you're buying a million dollar house, but your mortgage payment's going to be two thousand dollars a month or whatever it is. Yeah, I get it. I get it now. Okay. So thank you. <laughs> All so, right. Anna, your hand went up. Did it go up and then down again? 
It did. My question's a little bit later on. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll jump in later. I think. Okay. Um, again, uh, other facility stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna go through each one just to say, I didn't make substantial changes to these, uh, uh, to, um, I think this was for finance that one, sorry. Uh, I just have to remind myself uh, for their um, facilities management software. This is all fire stuff, um, I think, yes. Um, so one thing I did do is I moved the radio system out a year. And I listed it as, as borrowing. And I moved it out a year because the fire department made a pres presentation to us. But when I first asked the police department about it, they said they didn't know what it was. That worried me a little bit. So then um, I did get a little bit more feedback from them. and But I frankly sent them both a note this week. I said, listen, I, I've done these radio replacements in other towns. I know they're big projects. They take many years. There are a lot of components. And um, I just don't think you guys have a solid plan together at this point. So I'm going to put it off a year. Uh, and um, I think you need to present a more solid plan to Paul and to the next finance director and the JCPC. Um, also, this was the first year it had ever shown up. And that always makes me nervous when a $2 million project shows up out of the blue. Uh, so I, uh, that, that's, that's why that's out a year. Um, I think that was it for that one. Okay. So I see both Anna and Bob have their hands up. So Anna. Yeah. I mean, I think I've got, I've got big concerns about pushing this out a year, given the, the areas around us and UMass switching to the other type of radio um for this coming year and I was wondering if you had heard any more about um the leasing program that they had mentioned for the radios versus just the outright purchase um that was something that was mentioned I think quickly as an as a possible option um for this but I I do worry about sending it out a year I also don't necessarily think that and and maybe this is my naivete coming in but I, I don't know that people need to have tried and failed to have to then get a project approved. I think it's, I, I don't necessarily mark that against it. Um, I, and it does sound like, I'm curious what we didn't, he we heard from from police, but we didn't hear directly from dispatch. And so I, I think that would be a helpful perspective too. Um, and I know that they were, rep that police was representing dispatch, but I, I don't know that this was coming just from fire, even though police didn't necessarily talk about it. So I, I guess, I'm a little, I'm, I'm concerned about it getting pushed out a year. Um, I know it's a big ticket item, but we're also approving a lot of little ticket items that we kind of keep saying, well, it's just not a big amount, but at some point those add up. And, and I, I think we, I'd like us to look critically at those and uh, not necessarily knock off something that's major given the, the, I mean, all of Franklin County has shifted all, of, you know, all of UMass is shifting. So I, I'm worried about this. So I just want to make clear my concern about something showing up for the first time isn't that I think you said something about having something show up and then get knocked knocked back as if it's just that if if this is really the big deal that some people say it is why didn't they know about it before why did it take till all of a sudden now like these things don't happen overnight if there's a major shift in technology uh, people know it's coming. And uh, I do worry that sometimes salespeople are able to convince department heads that they need to do something right away, but, and it isn't necessarily the case. The amount of backup that I saw about the plan, I thought was fairly minimal. minimal. I did not, you know, the police did not ask for it. Um, and didn't, when I asked them about it, they did not Again, they first told me that they didn't know what it was. And the idea that the police and fire haven't, including dispatch, haven't completely coordinated together on this tells me that they need to do some more work and have a better plan. So that is my recommendation. I, um, 
I do suppose if it turns out that this is a big deal, um, you know, that is something that um, I suppose they can come back and make their argument to, to Paul and have him change his mind. It's also just frankly, at this point, I, I told Paul this is what I was doing and um, being able to get him to focus on this stuff now, given what's going on in his personal life, that he's out for the next couple of weeks is limited. I don't know how much you know about that, but he's got some family medical issues that he has to deal with. So that just, that, that kind of put me in a box. But I, I appreciate what you're saying, Anna. I, I just, they didn't make the case to me that, that this had to be done now. No, I appreciate that. And I, and I think, um, I, I definitely am, I'm trying more of engaging in the discussion around it because I do worry about it getting pushed out. I, I hear what you're saying about folks, you know, encouraging them to, to do it quickly, but I, um, I, I'm, I'm remembering back to the police presentation and they seemed clear on it at that point. Um, so I, I'm just, I'm trying to understand that, that piece a little bit. Um, maybe I misunderstood them, but we can go to Bob and Sarah. Okay. Bob. Yeah, Sandy, um, you, what's the other source in, in the, um, in the fire thing? Is that, is that the ambulance fund? Yeah. In that case, yes. Other can be a variety of things, but for fire, it is ambulance. Okay. Thank you. Sarah. Yeah. So two things. One, I'd I'd, I'd like if Anna is willing to explain what it why she's worried. She was worried about pushing it out, and I don't know if you mean you think the current system is just going to collapse, or there's some interop communication problem between Amherst and other areas, other cities. So that's one thing. And two, what is a drone? I didn't hear about any drone. That's another one that's, <laughs> at least it wasn't called a drone. We did. But that's in, that's in the next year too. So they didn't, we didn't oh, get a lot. Oh, okay. of, we didn't yeah. get a lot of presentations for things that were a year out. You're right. Sorry, I should have noticed that. All right. So, Anna, I wonder if you're willing to. Say yeah, of course. And I, I thought that they talked about the thermal imaging thing. I think I thought that's what the drone was. Um, but maybe no, that, anyway. But anyway, whatever. Um, Sarah, to to answer your question, I don't, I don't think it's calamity. But what was presented to us, uh, they talked about how they, um, there were some dead zones where they weren't able to receive uh, communications from um, dispatch as well as the way that their radios now do and don't function with um, Franklin County and UMass because those two organizations have shifted over to the digital system. So while it's not an entire, like it's not like they're trying to use carrier pigeons, um, <laughs> there are zones where they're not able to receive communication was what I remember hearing. Um, and that that communication is, is now not consistent or um, always, it, it, they don't necessarily talk to each other across those counties. Um, so that's what, that's my recollection. Uh, and they cited, they said, I think specifically like areas on University Drive, like there are some areas where now new buildings are going up too. I know they're not going to be, you know, habitated within the calendar year, but um, I do think that that's a consideration as well. They're populated areas. So one suggestion on this we can walk through is we can write up the report to say it was recommended that this be moved to be developed further with more information. But we, we think the town manager should, should also focus on whether we can wait a year. You know, we can we can leave it with a I mean Paul has he doesn't have a whole lot of time, does he? He has a budget that he has to present in May. And then, but for the capital plan, um, that doesn't get discussed publicly until June. So there's time to say, I, I'm very much persuaded that it should wait a year to get further developed. I think it's very problematic when you have um, a sales group offering you a uh, an almost $2 million system. Um, and if, if 
if I was told this is exactly the system that a bunch of other people have done, then it also, the implementation costs in Amherst could be lower because they've already tuned it in. So that's what I wasn't quite sure of on the at the the need to do it right away as opposed to work on the details of it more. Um, there's, you know, when they gave us the pieces, there's the the base receiver, and then there were all the mobile units. So also how many mobile units do you need? Um, so some of that was driving up the cost and some things you could lease and other things didn't make any sense to lease. So it had moving parts in it. So I'm comfortable doing this the way Sandy has recommended. I also think that if it got moved back into the 25 line, if we're borrowing for it and we borrow at the very end of the year, we we're mainly hitting FY 26, not 25. That's the year that's still showing a deficit, but that's okay. You know, I mean, it's kind of okay. Um, as So we can, on a, that's what I would suggest is writing it up with some question marks. Um, I'm wanting to make sure this is the right move. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Gene, Eugene. Yeah, on, on this same line item, <clears throat> because it's a, it does sound like a really, big project just from there's like a lot of moving spaces uh pieces base stations um antennas if i recall correctly in different locations um probably like a huge amount of tuning even if they've done it to some of the adjacent places that that we're going to try to plug into from a communication standpoint is this or could we also find out is yes if we if we finance it it mostly hits fiscal 26 but even still, it's probably big enough that it probably would go across two fiscal years. I don't fully understand how, like, wouldn't isn't this big enough that you probably would have two separate items in two separate fiscal years? Is that naive that's on my part? That's an excellent question. I asked that in an email to the chiefs, and I haven't gotten an answer back yet. Okay. <laughs> Which can, I mean, I don't mean, I really don't mean to be critical of staff. I think they do excellent jobs, but... Again, when I've done this before, there was a committee to, a committee together of police and fire and dispatch, and they reviewed all the components and so forth. And I'm just got getting answers to the kind of questions that I would normally ask about a project like this, including can we spend it over two years, or you know, do you buy like what are we buying when, and you know, uh, and uh, so. Yeah, when you put it when you put it that way, that we haven't had all of the potential departments that would be impacted by this, like fully on board and knowledgeable about it, that you know that that also kind of sets off some alarm bells a little bit. From is the one point nine million dollars the exact system that we need? So yeah, I, we I think we do need more information. I do agree with Anna though that this is a a potential you know response time slash safety thing um, that could cause some adverse problems you know if some kind of worst case scenario happens in the next year and we we don't move forward with it too so i want to be cognizant of that i guess i would just add one other aspect of this and then i will move on we don't really have a police chief now we have an acting chief i don't know if he will become the chief or not i really don't know anything about that but i do think that a police chief needs to put his or her imprimatur or imprimatur, however you say it, on this project. So um, with that, I'm going to keep going to, um, uh, these are the police projects. Um, again, I think they're pretty much in line with what you saw before. I don't recall changing them much, although I see hands coming up. So Eugene? <laughs> oh, I just had to put mine down. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Bob. Now the only question I had, and I, I know later on they've got the, the cruisers in there. Why is there nothing in FY 27, 28, and 29 for the police? I can't imagine they won't have any requests. But I do think that has something to do with not having a chief at this point. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we should we should be expecting some requests uh, in the out years. Yeah, I, I, I think it's just going to take another year for them to get their act together to Fair be enough. able to do that. Fair enough. You know, the other thing is we've split some of this capital that relates to police, like the chiller, 
the $900,000 yeah. chiller and the roof. That's all in another bucket called it's police, but it's not here. And then down in vehicles, there's 360,000. So, right. so it doesn't really add up. It's like, this is the police other category. Right. And, and I did hear them say the record management system, they could definitely li live with what they've got for another year that they're not quite ready. Um, so that to me was not just permission, but, but saying, yeah, it's next year, not this year. That's the four hundred thousand dollar one. Yes, that good point. Um, this next section, oops, I skipped ahead too fast. Um, this next section is um, oh yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff for Crocker Farm. Now I put a lot of it as borrowing. Uh, I lumped some of it together. Um, I I don't know. The dynamics of, of this. I think there's some political issues and there's some um, facilities issues. Uh, I I come from a place and I, and when I worked in Amherst, we had a single facilities department that coordinated projects in town and school buildings. That don't no longer happens. And I did ask Jeremiah, the town facilities person, what he thought about these things. Uh, I would just say, uh, I think on the one hand, they may need to do this work at Crocker Farm. I don't doubt that, that that could be true. Again, I'm not sure that I've seen the studies to show that that is um, in fact, what needs to be done the same way that Jeremiah is doing studies for town buildings and having all the roofs analyzed and then given a, a recommendation for each roof. And he'll have that in, during the next fiscal year and you can look at that and make decisions. Um, I don't know that the school department has done that. And I think somebody needs to ask that question. Um, the other thing that I heard from some people is that there's a feeling in the Crocker Farm community that, um, you know, Port River Wildwood was getting all this money and it's Crocker Farm's turn. Um, so I don't know what's driving that. And I don't want to speculate that that is what's driving it, but I do, I do think in general, it is never the case that you spend capital money because somebody deserves it. You spend capital money because the buildings need it. And so I do think that conversations need, needs to be had in town. Uh, you know, I'm doing this hours a week <laughs> and so I don't have the time to do that kind of stuff um, and but I do think that you and the staff next year need to have that some of that conversation with um, the school department about spending on that that location and also frankly whether uh, this stuff you know what the timing of some of this stuff is it, it should all be just one big project so if you're replacing HVAC equipment, oftentimes that's on a roof. So how you know, do you do the roof first? Do you do the HVAC equipment first? And it very much depends on which equipment it is. And uh, you know, it's very site specific. There's no one right answer to that. Uh, it just raised a lot of questions in my mind. So having said that, um, they are on the plan the way the schools asked for them. I put them under borrowing because they're very expensive. Um, and that's where we are. Anna. Anna. So, sorry, Sandy, the last sentence you said they're on the plan the way that the schools asked for them, and I was just trying to pull up the other plan. Are these dates, the dates that the schools initially indicated? I think yeah. so. Yeah, okay, okay, that's what I thought. Because I think for me, the, the question is, is there something preventing JCPC from asking those questions, which I think, you know, Crocker Farm's in my district. I'm going to always champion Crocker Farm. Yeah. And um, I also know that, for example, the Crocker Farm Playground is something that's been being requested and worked on for a number of years through CPA, through, you know, it's this has come up in a number of places. Um, these are not, I, I think this is in different ways, these Crocker Farm requests have come up often. Um, and so 
I'm curious if there's anything preventing us from as JCPC from requesting written responses to specifically the question about the strategic planning around the, the capital um, or the infrastructure. So the roof and the HVAC and the timing of those. Um, is that something we'd be able to do? I recognize that we're looking at this plan today, but I think just setting ourselves up well for the next, even the next iterations of this, um, it'd be helpful to get those responses. I would say those are very good questions to ask, and that is a good thing for JCPC to do. So I would say, yeah, as you're going through this same process next year, I mean, that's partly why I'm trying to flag it for you now, because it raises those questions in my mind. And they may came back, come back with great answers. I mean, I just left it on the plan, but I did. I do think um, it's a lot of money and somebody needs to look at it more carefully. So just, you know, one response on a, again, you know, in the report we're writing, we can also pull things out to send them directly to a group, but this, we're talking about their own request is out two, three, and four years, and it suddenly hits two and a half million, a million, you know, really big amounts. And one of the things Rupert said is that if the MSBA accelerated repair program opens up, some of this could turn into a grant, we would have to pay part of it. And so he can only, there's some questions he won't be able to answer with more certainty than a, a space, a placeholder. Um, and if the roof is failing or not failing, you know, and the HVAC equipment, because what one of the things I noticed is this is a totally different spending plan than last year, totally different. There were a lot of smaller, when I say smaller, they were $300,000 pieces. There weren't any two and a half million dollar pieces. So this is a shifting, a shifting way of thinking about Crocker that I think is so much in motion that it would be good to flag it as something that we, the town is gonna to need just more information on. Um, and, and playgrounds can go to CPAC. You know, yeah. so, you know, and, you know, so we, and we'll have a model accessible playground at Fort River and even the playground amount accessible playground, just so people know the accessible playground equipment at Fort River was $500,000, not $800,000, you know, so just, a, you know, having looked and that's real, those are real numbers in terms of what they're buying. So I think he was doing his best to put placeholders in. Yeah, I think we'll have a model playground until we build this even more model one at Crocker. <laughs> Thank you. Bob. Yeah, I, I'm wondering how much of the the money that's listed as schools, not specific to Crocker, is actually anything but Crocker. I mean, we're we're gonna basically build a new elementary school. So we should have new everything in that school, and we shouldn't have to replace. HVAC and you know exterior doors and things like that. So I, I don't I don't I mean I'm not saying that they're not real, but why shouldn't we? I mean it's probably on the next page of you, Sandy. Um, why shouldn't we? You know we've got all this stuff in here. I mean maybe copiers and and technology equipment, but mm -hmm. you know exterior doors, f f furniture replacement, electrical system certification. I mean that's all going to happen. As part of the construction, I would think. Uh, so, anyway, I, so I, just... I, I will note that there are a lot of things here that are um, blank, as opposed to previous years. Right. So the schools definitely did not ask for as much this year as they normally had in the past. Um, and then, other than that, um, yeah, I guess um, you know they they didn't talk that much in their presentation about. Uh, the future years. So I think those are, again, good questions for the committee to get more information on as you go forward. Yeah, I, I yeah, I recognize that they didn't, we didn't talk about this, but I just noticed that, you know, what they're asking for in out years would seem to only focus on Crocker Farm. We shouldn't need any of these, maybe some of the, you know, as I say, some copiers or some things we may need for the new school, but so that's, Bob, that's a good one to pose as a question. So as you said, you're looking at the fire, the fire alarm, but well, that's listed as Crocker, but everything after that is energy management, tech equipment, copiers, um, 
and that will all be new in the new school. The thing that won't be new is anything that's trying to coordinate between the schools, you know, so is all the furniture crocker. So we can, we can, we can just pose these as questions, you know. I just don't know. It just it would appear it would focus. We're going to need it for crocker and not necessarily for the new school. Yep. Sarah. I wanted to say, if you go back to the previous page, just about the Crocker Farm playground. Um, my last year on CPAC, which was at least two, I think was two cycles ago now, I think they asked for this and they didn't get it. <laughs> so, so maybe it's all in here now as opposed to partly CPA money and partly JCPT. Well, and, and it could end up being split somehow, depending on what yeah. C, CPAC decides. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they tried again with CPA or not. Well, uh, frankly, I think JCPC could encourage them to do that, say, hey, you know, we've got a lot of needs. and Well, I think that's what CPA did. <laughs> How about yeah. you go to JCPC? <laughs> well, yeah, but the, just because they do it to you doesn't mean you can't do it to them. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Lee. Yeah, I'm just... I, I, I thought I understood, now I'm confused, because I, I was assuming that everything on this page that's now up, from uh, you know roof to generator replacement, was all for Crocker on the assumption that, it, that the new school had its own budget and everything that was part of the new school has already, was already taken care of. So, yes, Lee, it's these things here are all Crocker. Okay. But I'm going to move down the page, the next page, and then these things are all school generally. Okay. So uh, okay. I think that was Bob's point. Is okay. If so we for, have a brand new school, why do yeah, we have he, to spend money on doors? Yeah, he's or, cut know, off the very first column. So the fire alarm system is Crocker, and the rest is just called schools. Uh, okay. And this is something you actually do have. I mean, or you can. Yeah, have. yeah. yeah. No, I'm well, just saying I, right. that the I, observation is that there's a whole bunch of other things um, that is called schools. And the, the other thing to remember, none of it's regional schools. This is, no, that's, 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 in a, that's in a whole other, for all sorts of interesting reasons. Um, right. So whatever this, whatever these expenses are, wherever they belong, they belong to the town of Amherst, not as part of the, I, I, I get that. All right. Well, I, I, it's hard for me to see how some of these, I, in fact, I think I remember the exterior door discussion and I thought it was exclusively about Crocker, but yeah, sure. Let's get more information. Okay. Excellent. Uh, we're now into, uh, if everybody's ready, into DPW. Um, and these are pretty much uh, along the things that they asked for. The only thing that's different is this item for sidewalks. And in the future, they asked for $50,000 a year. Paul Blockelman said um, that A, he thinks we need to spend more on sidewalks than 50, and that in other years, JCPC apparently has sometimes added money. So what I did is I just used that as my um, default bucket if there were if there was any extra money, I just dumped it into sidewalks. <laughs> so that's why it's an odd number, 179.48, who, who does capital at that level, but <laughs> that's why it is there. Uh, and uh, yeah, other than that, uh, it's pretty much what they asked for in this section. Uh, Lee, do you and, have another question? Oh, Anna. Oh, oh. Okay. Anna, then? Um, <laughs> So I apologize. I missed the the DPW presentation. Could someone refresh me on the um, field maintenance and what fields that that entails? That's that's uh, regional schools in particular, and they split the field maintenance over two years. Last year was a piece of it, and this is the second year. And this is not um, this is normal grass fields, not. Uh, turf fields. Uh, so we have an explicit what it is. It's 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 a, a, 
a piece of equipment that's big and wide right and, and do the the pieces as opposed to a plow or a tractor oh. no I, I understand and so so is this factoring in the either addition or removal of grass at the regional level in terms of when we look out a couple years uh, I'm, I'm thinking about the decision that's being made uh, by the school committee about this and how that might impact our, the need for capital costs um, um, around, the, around the big, field maintenance. The, the, remember Fort River is going to be reopening and yeah. uh, 20 acres of grass or five, 10 acres of grass will need, it's not going to need. That's not the region. So how is that? How is, you said this was for the regional, the school. This, is, the for, this is for the. For all of it. Yeah, the DPW does field maintenance for the town, right? Um, as opposed to the schools doing field maintenance, whether it's regional. So, because Fort River, I I said more. They also do the fields, the Mill River fields, you know. So it's fields. Um, <laughs> it's, fields. And it's fields, and so the reason I said more the around the regional schools and those large fields is because. For the next year and a half, the Fort River fields will not be, be out of service. Yeah. Will be out of service is the best way of thinking about it. <laughs> you know, you're not going to be out there uh, maintaining it. Um, and is this, um, does this get the grass to the level required to play all sports? For example, I know field hockey um, requires a much lower uh, mow versus soccer. That's what was described to us. Okay, thank you. And I apologize for missing that meeting. Thank you. All right. Can I add something to yep. what Anna, Anna asked about the whether this has anything to do with the proposed artificial turf? I want us, I want everybody to say artificial turf because grass is turf. So anyway, um, if if there is one artificial turf field, it's only going to be one out of all the grass fields in town. So I don't think it'll make an appreciable difference. We'll still need the mower. <laughs> we'll still need the mower. And I don't know what, if anything might be needed specifically. I mean, I believe there is some equipment needed to, to roll or whatever is needed for an artificial surface, but thank we're you. Not, we're not there yet. Yeah. Thank you. Um, if there are no other questions, I'm going to move on to the next department. Uh, and this is um, conservation. I just have to remind myself. Um, so in the similar vein to what I did with um, the roof uh, proposals from facilities, I took what Stephanie had proposed as a dollar amount for sustainable projects for FY25, and I left that amount the same in the out years because um, again, in the at the time I did that, we I was looking at a fairly big deficit over the five years, so I had to reduce it. So um, I thought at this point for planning purposes, just stick a number in there that um, you know you, you know the town will commit to. And if over time, Stephanie comes up with more specifics and out years, that number could change, but um, it is a reduction from the amount that she put forward. Um, even though I do think sustainability projects are very important for the town, I just thought for something that was new to this plan at, at these big numbers, we shouldn't automatically be increasing the number every year. Um, other than that, um, I think pretty much, uh, these are the things that uh, conservation asked for. Anna. So I would rather have taken the excess from that we had added to um, sidewalks and instead bump up the conservation number instead of cutting it. I think that would be my my preference. Are you saying you only did that in the out years? You haven't done it in this year. That's I only did in the out years. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, I misunderstood. Two hundred fifty is what she asked for. For Stephanie for asked for two fifty, and she gave a specific. It's in bog. It's in the. Yeah, that's what I thought. And then you're yeah. saying she asked for three, like up, up more than that in the in the future years. Yeah. Okay, so it's not necessarily we're not locking into that. You're just. Oh my God, sorry, my dog just caused havoc. Um, <laughs> knocked my entire charging thing out of the wall. Uh, you're saying, but but a future JCPC would make that decision. We're not locking ourselves into it. 
Right. And right. just so Thank people you. know, I'm I've got all these microscopic sheets in front of me, but the original ask was 400, 400, 400, 500 in the out years. Yeah. You know, so so what he's done is just straight lined it across to the 250. Um Thank you. And she can always come back with a bigger number in the future if she needs. Yeah, thanks. And it what she did was, I thought, terrific this year um, on giving us very specific things she was going to do with the money. Um, I agree. All right. Uh, I'm going to move on next to planning. Um, so uh, I did leave that, that big hundred in for those consultants because that was the conversation you had with uh, Chris. And so I went with that. Uh, downtown parking, I put that out a couple of years because, A, I needed to balance the budget in 25, and uh, also because I just thought there have been so many damn parking studies in Amherst. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. I already talked about the Civil War tablets. I, I think this will uh, end up giving them what they need. And I uh, left the uh, demolition for the clubhouse at Hickory Ridge uh, because I know Paul says he, he thinks it's becoming what in legal terms they call an attractive nu nuisance, um, that there's worry that kids are going to start getting in there and somebody's going to get hurt. So I do think we needed to do that right away. Okay. Sarah, your hand is up. Yeah, I'm not persuaded about <laughs> that $100,000 for zoning and feasibility studies is an appropriate use of capital. And I'm as interested in zoning as the next person <laughs> um, and understand the importance, but I don't see that, that those kinds of studies lead to the eventual production of a town capital asset. I mean, it. Well, it may or may about not. Zoning, you mostly, you're changing what private property owners are, are going to do. So I, I convince me that this is appropriate. <laughs> Fine, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And you tell me how I do. Okay. <laughs> uh, for one, if it is common, and it has been in Amherst and it's in other communities where I've worked to put uh, capital study money in uh, a capital plan, uh, because if you don't, then um, you you don't really have a source for it. There's not, you'd have to increase the uh, planning department budget by let's say $100,000 next year, which, and then it kind of, it's one of those things where you're, the planning department budget would be going up and down, up and down every year. And uh, because otherwise they just, there's just not money in their budget to do these sort of things. These studies, uh, sometimes have a major effect on things like zoning, but they may also have impacts for things like uh, how the town looks at, you know, traffic flow or, you know, whether to put a traffic circle in an area or how much more traffic is gonna exist in an area because there are zoning changes and so forth. So it's hard to predict with certainty what the whole scope of these changes is going to be until I actually do the studies. Um, that's about as much as I know as being a non-planner, but again, I, I would say you heard Chris talking about the kind of things that she wanted to do, so I will leave it at that. <laughs> Kathy's gonna try give it a stab too. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in on the amount. Um I could see fifth you know, this is the planning department got a hundred thousand to talk about potential uh, design changes in the downtown zoning and and took them two years to hire someone who's an expert on design, you know, to actually put not just, it can be 60 feet tall, but that some kind of, and it should be set back from the street, you know, for to, to make some recommendations to us based on input. And my, I don't think much has, there's never not that much done. And the list she gave of, these are such technical terms, but professional development park, we've got places zoned for that. Do we? Is that useful or not? We keep overriding it. We've got floodplain conservancy, which is different than floodplain. 
I'm not sure why that's not an internal staff set of looks. That's, I have a different question on this, that do we need an outside person to come in and look at this? Um, so what what is interesting about the university drive uh, example is that uh, two buildings are being proposed for a corner that couldn't normally exist in that zone and everyone agreed on a variance and just said, sure, we're okay building a building that's taller <laughs> and various things. And it didn't require going outside. That could be between the planning board and the staff. So I wasn't sure, Sandy, about the 100, you know, whether she needs 50 because there's a particular expertise out there that we don't have. Um, um, or does she staff up for a year? Is she, I know they've been down a staff. Anna may know more about the staff person. Is this a temporary staff person who knows a lot about certain things? I don't know, but I didn't, I didn't quite understand why we needed an outside person to do some of this work, Sarah. So I do think the work, the thinking needs to happen, but um, what they did was remarkable on University Drive. They took the whole overlay thing and were quite creative on suggesting ways to change it, all staff. So Anna. Yeah, I think the answer, Kathy, I don't, I don't know details about the hiring process for that other person, but um, I'm guessing it's, if you want it done within the next year, we need to hire a consultant to do it. I think that that's my understanding is uh, there are so many requests from the town, the council, from everyone that um, they need to hire consultants to do some of these projects and, and, this is one that would get a consultant for. So I, I don't think it's a matter of lack of expertise. I think it's a matter of bandwidth. Um, and I, I think that we could say we want internal staff to do this, but then it's not going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to guess it won't get done for a while because of the, all of the other things that they're currently doing. So um, that that's my understanding, Kathy is, is really, it's about the bandwidth that the staff have. Okay. And I, I just wouldn't want to see it. You Were you here on, I can't remember who was been on the council, but there was a whole thing on 40B overlay. There was a consultant hired. We did a whole bunch of meetings and then it went nowhere. I don't want to see us repeating things that we've done that took a lot of everybody's time and then right. didn't move forward. And that was a consultant. That that was, you know, it was, they weren't a bad consultant. They weren't a bad consultant. It's just, yeah. we we have all that thinking in in a file cabinet somewhere at this point. Did it uh, did it not move? I was not on the council at that point, but did it not move forward because the council decided it wasn't a project they wanted to pursue, or did it not move forward because we just didn't act on it? Because I feel like that's sometimes a consultant will do all the work and we decide, okay, based on the results, we don't want to do this. My and sense is it, it, they didn't. It wasn't clear that the best there was a downtown particular place it wasn't clear that it had been thought through well for that and they didn't look as well at some other places that people wanted to have considered so you know this was the housing trust it was a lot of people were involved in this so it, it's it's so Sarah's question is about use of money for studies I don't mind a use of money for studies if I think it's expertise we don't have and what you're saying is we're short-staffed so so I think maybe again if we keep it in this line we we want more of an explanation before it goes out to bid for the consulting on you know what kind of person what what are we hiring because there are different kinds of people for some of this stuff she was talking about unless there's a senior planner out there who wants to work for Amherst for a year <laughs> and they're gonna snap that person up <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Or is it something that we decide is not a priority? And so we don't want a consultant, nor do we want internal staff time spent on it. Right? I think that's, it kind of gets back to what the council was talking about at our retreat, which is we, we send a whole lot of stuff to staff to work on and we need to pick which ones we want them to actually be spending their time on. Um, okay. I don't know if it's understaffed or overburdened or a little bit of both, but yeah. They're mismatched. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the math isn't mathing on that one. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving. Yep. Um, the next project oops, are these two playgrounds, which I think in the original were much closer to the present. And my conversations with Dave Zomack and Jeremiah both made it clear that neither of these uh, playgrounds at 
Mill River Memorial Pool or, uh, excuse me, or Memorial Pool or Mill River were um, ready to roll anytime soon. So I just dumped them to the end. I made them borrowing so they have no effect on the bottom line because the borrowing wouldn't start until 30. Um, if you wanted to put the whole plan back much closer to balance, I could change one of these to cash and then would be basically even in over the five years. So that's that's what's going on there. Uh, I just bumped them out because I, I got the impression that they weren't ready for uh, prime time. Anna? Is this one also an instance of by bumping it out, we are giving them the opportunity to fund these through, for example, CPA funding uh, and then take it off of our roster because these seem like great projects for CPA funding. And I'm sure that they've thought about that and have other things in the pipeline that they're going to go to CPA for, but that is still an opportunity for this and it may not even show up down the line. That is exactly correct. Okay. And 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 they said that quickly, Anna, when they presented this, you know, it was like a, they already have a piece for War Memorial from CPA, so, you know, they could get another piece. Um, okay. Um, these next things, we're now getting in things for Cherry Hill, a, uh, fixing the bridge that um, Kathy has to slog across in, in wet weather, um, a used lawnmower, uh, in the future, some dredging of the irrigation pond there, uh, and then in the, in the future, a couple of other pieces of equipment. So fairly modest, frankly. Oops. Um, we are now into um, vehicles. Um, again, the big thing that I changed here was to move this sidewalk plow out to 27. Um, other And I did leave the um, police vehicles in at four a year. And um, I don't know in the future if you're going to want to buy four every year. I just put it in there because that's what he asked for. And um, it didn't make that much of a difference in the capital plan as it was. So, uh, you know, I didn't care about it too much. Um, I do think once there is a new chief in place, you're gonna to have to ask him or her about the condition of the vehicles, how many miles they have on them, and uh, which is really for cruisers, the, the key thing, how many miles do they accumulate, how many hours of running do they accumulate in a year? Um, given that they, a couple of years ago, couldn't buy any, and another previous year couldn't buy as many as they, otherwise would have been allocated. I went with the four for FY25 and figured that you guys can figure this out for future years. Um, and that I think was the only, um... oh, and I changed the source for the parking vehicle to the transportation fund from the general fund. And so, there are lots of hands, so. <laughs> yeah, starting, start with Eugene. <laughs> I just had a, a real, I'm not sure if this is the correct venue for this question, going back to Cherry Hill. Um, <laughs> is, I, I, and this might be a place where these numbers exist. Cherry Hill is probably a net positive because they charge fees, right? So correct. I just, I was just, just kind of like looking at their website. Um, so, I mean, like that 75,000 is probably easily covered by the money that's coming in for the fees. Yeah. And it's know. interesting that you raise that because during the budget hearing, we had um, Paul had at, was starting to ask a lot of questions along those lines uh, about you know how much uh, Cherry Hill does cover and, and it does turn out that they do in cover in fact cover their expenses so cool. your question is very timely. Cool. And you. that's 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 the new good news, Eugene, because they used to be they used to <laughs> the fact it's, that everyone else closed their golf courses. <laughs> And we we increased greens fees has has ended up meaning I don't know whether they have enough to pay for this kind of extra you know for fees but so. well I will say that the Cherry Hill fees go into the general fund I I think we used to have a separate fund or revolving fund for Cherry Hill or something and because the finances were so precarious at one point it was brought back into the general fund. But so the fees just flow into the general fund now. 
just like any I mean, other fee. I'll, I'll I'll probably just take that offline and just see if I can see some numbers there. But like if they're the only group here that actually pays for themselves, that's that's amazing. <laughs> it's somewhat weather dependent. <laughs> true, true, true. So Bob. Yeah. Also, um, one of the things that Ray said was when the when the bridge goes off its moorings, they have to shut the course down and they lose all that revenue. So I think you know we we definitely the bridge is and you you gotta you gotta have a mower for the greens. So I don't see the, either of these as being a, a a real big thing. What I do have an issue is with is the greens mower in the uh, vehicles. Um, I don't remember seeing that before. Maybe it was there. Certainly, we didn't really talk about vehicles very much. But um, as as I recall, Ray's position was that a new mower would be around seventy thousand. So this looks like a new mower, but it's for the middle school. Yeah, yeah no, that's the same question. question, Bob. I didn't know what this one was. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I don't be, why. That why might be that original mower that he then changed to the used one. So that yeah. may be extra money. Yeah. So I, I was thinking maybe it was a duplicate that one was listed under Cherry Hill and one was lit because unless someone tells me, I don't think there are any greens. No, there aren't any. At the middle school. <laughs> oh, they have a new putting class. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, uh, let me ask about that. Ray did say that. that his original cost was 71 for Cherry Hill, but then he found a used one for 35. So it is, it is, um, it felt like a duplicate and I didn't remember it. And he did say that field hockey requires a very, you know. That's what, that's what I was asking earlier yeah. about the mower. Yeah. They were that's that's at the high, high school. school. But that, so maybe this one is for field hockey, you know. It's at and high school. It's not, a, they don't play at the, I don't believe they play at the middle school. Are you, did they cut it at the middle school? I, I don't, what? I guess I don't know. Okay. Anyway, I think we need to, we need some clarification on this. So, so and it's mainly, are there two of them or just one? There's and, one. and, you know, and if it's for either the high school or the middle school, it shouldn't be, Amber shouldn't be paying for it all alone. <laughs> So, right. so I'll, I'll I'll send them an email when this movie when this movie when this meeting is done. <laughs> um, and then the other big thing I did uh, is I moved the fire building, excuse me, the DPW building out a year, because I, I mean maybe it will move up quicker. Maybe you know. Uh, I'm wrong about this, but I just don't see any movement on it. The other thing about uh, this is that it ultimately the borrowing for this will be broken up into phases. So there may be, even if it does move up earlier, there may be some initial design work that needs to be spent in FY27, and then the construction follows. Uh, but um, my understanding is there isn't even an agreement at this point on a location. Uh, even though I know this is an important project, I moved it out. So I hope I'm not stepping on anybody's toes by doing that, but that's what I did. So I have, I, I saw that you had done that. So I, I just have a, you know, a question when I bounce back to the summary of all of this, there is room and I think, Sandy, we can write it up the way you've just described, um, but there's room if it should move to we're ready to go in FY27 rather than 28, the borrowing costs would hit FY28, which is a year you're showing a surplus. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a, um, so it's sort of, if, since you don't see any in 27, um, so that was my, looking at this and you know of course fortunately we don't have to do a 10-year capital budget <laughs> <laughs> you know to see what does fy30 look like you know and fy31 as dpw comes online and but you know um so if if people are comfortable with just saying that's what's happened but 
you know, I started to do a draft is, you know, and it's got blanks in it. So since we have to get you a draft by next week, um, we can mention this is put put it out. And then in the in the revised 10 year capital, uh, 10 year debt service, you can see what the debt would be if it moved a year earlier than a year later. And since those are in the super guesstimates, because we don't even know whether we can get it for 30 million. Um, you know, we so- just did one in Arlington for 42, although it is a bigger DPW. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> you had, there was there was a grandiose plan originally in Amherst for a really big DPW, <laughs> but it's being scaled back. So are people comfortable with, with what, what he's done? Um, so- I, 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 yeah. I'll just one, mention one thing I didn't do is I didn't put any money in for the citizen articles. Right, that's what request. I was gonna raise that one. Um, and the other thing, so maybe we can talk quickly about that. And then if you could put, after we finish that discussion, put back up your summary because we're generating surpluses in out years. And so my question yeah. on that, <laughs> the school people will like this question is do we need to be at 10 and a half percent for capital in 2029? You know, yeah. because um, it's generating a half million dollars in surplus or do we leave it with that assumption right now, but do we point it out in the report? Because that half, extra half a percent came out of operating budgets. You know, so if, if it could be, uh, 10.2% or 10 point, you know, something else um, rather than, uh, you know, get to roughly balanced, but don't get to, because there's, there is a tendency to uh, spend it if you show it, um, you know, so, so that was a question I just had on the, um, the Sandy's magic with the numbers moving some big ones off altogether, like 450,000 for the intersection and moving others around have now generated a surplus in 28 and a half million dollar surplus in 29 and a half million overall, you know, by the assumptions that are in here. So, so I, I do want to show if you can yeah. see this multicolored page, this does show yeah. the debt service in the future. So that's one of the things I did this morning is update this. So it is in what I'll send you. And then uh, as Kathy was saying, we do have a surplus. And again, part of the reason is, um, what the heck is it? Oops, Oops. I didn't wanna do that. Part of the reason is that um, I had borrowing for those um, playgrounds mm -hmm. uh, at War Memorial and Mill River. And so if I put this back to cash, that would get rid of the surplus and keep us very close to the 10 oh. and a half percent. Okay. So if you think having the surplus, that big surplus out there might cause political issues, then we can easily get rid of that. And now I will go back to the, um, the sheet. So as you can see, there's about a $451,000 surplus. If we added $400,000 in cash and 29 for one of those pools and or playgrounds, then it all just balances out. Uh, I leave that for others to respond to you know i you know it it actually would be the one of the first times i can remember that we've focused on out years to this ex, you know to this extent in terms of worrying about because that clearly could be a decision uh, you know just do it in cash because the other thing everyone might or might not have noticed but we don't have to deal with the big buildings the fire station doesn't exist in the 10 year because the assumption as of two years ago is that we would have enough in reserves to pay for the fire station with reserves. Um, so right now there's no fire station with debt service at all. So I see- yeah, I, I do think you should mention that in the report because some people will be looking for it. 
Like, where did it go? <laughs> so Lee's hand is up and Bob's hand's up. Lee, you're on mute. I had it up and down because I think I substantially agree with you, Kathy. I mean, unless there's some real reason to show a surplus, I think there are so many ongoing chronic demands in town. Um, and as you say, there's some big ticket items that you're just speculating. I mean, we can only speculate about what they're going to cost. So I think it's better to show that, you know, that we're not in great debt and that we're balanced, but not that we're generating a surplus, which we may not actually be able to do. Although it's lovely to show it. I mean, I understand. I understand when you're putting a, a budget like this together and you come out at the end and you have a positive number, it makes you very happy. So, so it's, a it's a political decision. So Sandy's quick solution to it was to not have the two playgrounds be debt, right? Yeah, yeah I would have, I'd, I'd take one of them off and then that would basically leave you with a uh, a slight surplus in 29 and an overall surplus of $51,000, which is okay. close enough for government work. So Bob. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I, I'm, I'm neutral about it. I, I don't believe any numbers beyond FY25. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, if anybody's making decisions based on what we're projecting in FY29, I think they're crazy. Um, so <laughs> uh, I don't I don't I mean, it, it's fine to show it as being in balance or to show it as being a surplus. But either way, I don't think it, it matters that much. So so again, you know, since we're short on time because we started late and um, we don't want to keep meeting until the end of April, we could leave it the way it is. But make this with notes that in if we did the playground the the surplus it would be a balanced budget that so there's a choice out in the out years of debt financing or not for playgrounds would be I, I think my inclination would be to do one of those playgrounds as cash make okay. it look pretty balanced and then yeah, that's fine i mean I, I, as i say i don't have i don't feel very strongly about it but i you know i don't believe any of the numbers that we have no, i don't i don't either bob <laughs> since since from year to year the next year changes so yeah. we're not even good for two years of this so sandy is that fairly easy for you so you just get us a different yeah okay cash um so should we have a quick or not so quick discussion about the resident proposals yeah Sorry, I raised my hand. That's okay. Go go for it. Yeah, I, I think we should. I just remind me what was their total cost? Fifty thousand for the one that put two of them at each of our schools, and four thousand five hundred. So it doesn't even meet the capital threshold for right. the one street where a resident has a street where people speed and ended up in her front yard on a regular right. basis, you know, or in other near accidents. If it turns out that the $71,000 for the mower at the middle school is a duplicate, then there's money in there to, to cover the costs of these things. So, I mean, I'm not sure that we can build it because I know you have to get traffic studies and all sorts of things, but, um, and the police have to agree, but, it seems like if, if we have the funding this year, we should go ahead. I think they were both reasonable projects. So Anna and then Sarah. Yeah, I, I strongly endorse the one by the schools. I think that that makes a lot of sense. And I, I think that it's a really good um, use of the resident requests. Um, I have concerns about the other one just in terms of, and I and the the, the concerns that I have aren't, good enough to disqualify it because we don't have a current process. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. Um, but I think the fact that we don't have a process is, is a problem um, for, for traffic calming measures. And it's something that I think we need our council committees to focus on um, because we're going to get requests everywhere and anywhere. And, and I don't, um, I think, you know, what, what was just said about having engineering studies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
I agree with that, but we also have no process to say they need that. Um, and so I think that's my concern right now is, is we need a process before these come to JCPC or JCPC can be the first step, but then they still have to go through another process so that we don't completely, you know, negate the ability of these signs to slow people down because they're everywhere and anywhere. Um, so I, I just want to express that. And then I don't know about whether or not something meets the, the threshold for capital in terms of resident requests. I, I don't know if that is, I, I don't mind the idea of resident requests not having to meet that threshold because we are kind of the only avenue that they have for that type of request. So I, that, that doesn't bother me necessarily that it doesn't hit the 10,000 mark. Cause I think many resident requests may not, but I am very bothered by the, the lack of, um, process. Sarah. Yeah. A couple things. Um, I don't want to hold the lack of process against residents with good ideas, you know, and, and there are dangerous roads in town, so let's just do it. And maybe that will stimulate some action on, on whatever process needs to be developed. But thinking about the school, the signs for the schools, um, all for school safety, and, and maybe we discussed this and I forget, I mean, the Wildwood School will come down in a few years, won't need signs there. And meanwhile, at Fort River, we're probably going to be having, I mean, the, the traffic is going to be so disrupted anyway, and there are already signs telling me to do this or do that. I, I, I don't know if it's useful to put signs there before the new school is finished. So I, I, I don't know. So Sarah, I, I like the idea. <laughs> Sarah, your question then is the, the two time, so you came up with the number 10 by counting them where right. Fort River was some of them. So the, there's, I also think, I also would be in favor of funding at least that piece. And Anna, to address your, and we need a process. One possibility might be that we say, you know, uh, the school should figure out exactly how many and where, and then there should be a process on deciding where else, and we open up a line, whatever they're called, dynamic, he had a name for them, dynamic whatevers. Um, we open up a line so that those can be purchased and over the next year, we see where they go. Um, the state put one here on the road I live on when they lowered the speed to 45. And it it actually has helped lower, it used to be 50. It has helped lower the speed from 60 to 50 <laughs> because people see that they're five miles over the speed limit, you know, when they, when they come zooming by, but um, they would otherwise ignore the change in the speed limit where it's 50, just a little bit up the road. So you, you can almost see them start to break. Um, uh, so, so, but it would have to be what you just said. There'd have to be, where is the best use for these? Because if, as soon as they're everywhere, people ignore them. Um, I, so Bob's thing was like open up a line for as much as 70. I was going to say open up a line for 40 or 50 with the the schools being the first piece of it. And then Sandy's other way of doing it, if 71 is an overestimate, put it all into sidewalks. You know, I mean, <laughs> shove, it, shove it over, <laughs> shove it over. If we've got a sidewalk, at least allow people to walk on it. Yeah. Anna. So I think um, the first to the first point, I, I understand where you're coming from, and I'm curious about the opportunity for looking into signs that are movable, um, because we know that um, there are plenty of places in town that could use them. So I, I, I that's a question I have for, I guess, for DPW on are these signs able to be picked up and moved to another location installed again, or are they really, once they're in, they have to be destroyed when they're not useful anymore? Um, cause I would, I still think that even though it's a couple years out, uh, 
especially, you know, by Wildwood, I think that would be particularly helpful. Um, there is, you know, there's one by Cushman daycare center that's movable. The police put it there. Yeah. Oh it, yeah. I was part of TSO with that whole. And so it's been sitting there, you know, I think it's going to be sitting there till we agree to do speed humps or something else there. Yeah. But, so, so I, I do think something like that, I, I think some sort of speed sign I would like to see happen at the schools. Um, and, and I recognize the merit of possibly doing a, a removable one. Um, and then I think Kathy, to your point, I, um, I still think that TSO in conjunction with, uh, the transportation advisory committee needs to come up with a process. I don't think that we should limit any sort of, I, I think your idea is an interesting one, but I think we should open it to general traffic calming measures, not just speed signs, because some places they're looking for something else and we'll end up with lots of different funds for lots of different things. Um, but I, I do think it's an intriguing answer. I, I actually kind of feel like leaving the resident request as the opportunity for that allows people to work within an engineering study to get what they need versus just limiting it to one thing. Um, but I, and, and I agree, I'm not, I am not suggesting we limit this request because we don't have a process. I'm absolutely not saying that. I think that in our report, however, uh, I think we need to make it explicitly clear that people are getting bounced around between committees, between the council, between JCPC. There isn't a place for them to go because everywhere else tells them to go to the other place, right? Like we're just, we just even said it now when we said, well, they should go to the schools and the schools should decide to fund those signs, right? Like they were told to come to us. So I, I think that we need to honor that resident request process. And we need, I don't think it needs to be this committee, but if traffic calming is it, or if something else is it, we need to, to clearly articulate um, articulate this, or we need to just take ownership and say yes or no. Uh, so, but I don't think we can do both. So what you just said about bouncing around, it'll be the third, if we if we can maybe write it better, it will be the third time we've written that advice. And I'm not against doing it. I know, I don't know what else to do though. No, no. But so the question is, if Sandy finds that there is this 70, that's a duplicate, do we want to open up a line called traffic calming, including speed things for the schools um, at 50, at some amount that would allow this to move forward? And that to the extent it's not all used for that, or it could be a mix of stationary and mobile, to the extent it's not all used, it could be used for other calming advice. But the first thing would be for these resident requests, the resident requests around the schools. I'm okay with that. I, it wasn't necessarily what I was suggest. I was suggesting individually funding these as they were asked. I worry in okay. two years that that would limit um, other resident requests that aren't related to traffic calming, if that makes sense. So you so were going I, to go all the way for the, so Jeremy asked for 10 and Janet asked for one. You I was just, saying we should, I believe we should fund those this year. Yeah. Uh, Janet's was not school related. No, I know. No, no she just had. She I just had one on the road. Right, but I, it sounded like Kathy was. I was going to. I was going to limit it. I, I don't. I'm not strong on this, Sarah. On limiting it to just the schools because it was coherent to me that you would want to do this there. I did, wasn't sure you needed two at each place, and I wasn't sure you needed any at Fort River in the short term. So the, right. my question on that was, was it fifty? But if they're mobile. Um, so I'm, I see Lee's hand is up. I do think though, Kathy, sorry, just my, my last point was, I do think that we still should have either a traffic study or an engineering study done before they're installed. Um, so that we're not determining where they go specifically, but I think if we are giving that area, I, I think that folks who have much more expertise should be deciding exactly where they get placed. Okay. So I see Lee's hand is up. I, yeah. I just have a question about the uh, possible nature and status of these public requests, are they are they restricted to being about traffic calming or? No, okay. no it's just- it's Okay, just so this is just for this year, we have these two requests. They happen both to be about traffic calming. And so we're- So to give you an example, last year we had um, a bike, one of the bike stations that- I remember. Put a new one in. We've had crosswalks. They've often related to roads because people can't, it, it has to be, <laughs> town you yeah. know, so you can't just say i want a porch on my house or something yeah. you know <laughs> i get but it it's, it's, it's been speed humps yeah holding traffic lights um 
adding a doing a sidewalk study to put a sidewalk in mm -hmm. on a road that doesn't have a sidewalk. So mm -hmm. it's largely revolved around road and walking safety in town. Um, because I think those are more mm -hmm. amenable to the notice, notice of a, a resident capital request. Mm -hmm. You know, we could have people asking for an additional swing in a playground. You know, I, I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. just, we never, it, there's no limit to what the proposal could be. We just haven't had it. Um, but is, is that part, I mean, is that a, a partial explanation for why there's not been like a process because these public requests can be about so many different things. I think the issue that has run into is when it's traffic calming, it's brought by someone who there's a specific street that they have a problem with. As soon as they name that street, someone on our own committee could say, I have, another I have a problem. Just like <laughs> so shouldn't we have a way of... <laughs> An example is there's an intersection with a traffic light. You can avoid the traffic light by going down this street, then this street, which is narrow without any sidewalks and cars go zooming around. So there's more than one of those in town. <laughs> and the people who came with help us. Um, so the question was, do you just do it because they knew they could come? Or do you have a plan on where this should go and what priority? So we just... But Anna just said we've we we haven't responded to any of them right. because it's like yeah. where where were they supposed to go? Um, and meanwhile, we set up this fantastic possibility of residents coming with ideas. Um, so that that's my long or short. Yeah. Way. The only one that's made it through since I've been watching was the sidewalk study for East Pleasant, and that was done by DPW. And we haven't seen the results of it, but they did eventually do it. And they warned us it would be expensive to do the sidewalk, Sarah. <laughs> you know, But we have a where it would go and how it would have to cross the street somewhere at DPW. Um, but they've never proposed doing it. Mm. Um, well, can, yeah. yeah, I mean, sometimes there's, you know, sometimes a certain amount of sort of ad hocing can't be helped maybe and but so i mean and it seems oh you don't want people to get caught in the washing machine going round and round forever but if if you have a a place where you have a committee that considers capital proposals and you want to make room for individuals who can't quite figure out where in the structure of town government their request fits it it might I mean, maybe JCPC is the best place to come with the stipulation that, you know, we're sort of doing what we're trying to do today is say we have this much money, it will cover this request. And here's the process that now needs to be followed to make sure that the police are on board or that the schools are on board or the neighbors on Southeast Street are on board. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. So we'll try to write it up as a draft and see what people. I'm trying to figure out what ha what to put in the minutes. <laughs> I see. You know, I can just say you can say long discussion about residents. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yeah. selfish. It's all about me. <laughs> can I ask to the ex to the extent? I mean, it sounds like maybe we're going to say. Yeah, okay, we'll give money for these, but we need somebody needs to do a traffic or engineering study. Well, does that cost money or does that can that be done by town staff? Because for otherwise like, you're just taking a big chunk of money. Things like the best placement, the police could weigh in on it and they they can act pretty quickly. Speed humps and changing road configurations is something bigger. So this, um, so especially with Anna's idea that some of these could be mobile, you know, that they don't have to be forever in the place they went. It's it's just someone. What, what, what did Jeremy Jeremy when he came? He's the one who said the the ten. He went to Guilford and he said, "I like the idea as long as it doesn't come out of my budget." So that I just don't want to say. <laughs> 
that we shouldn't say for these specific requests, first, we need a traffic or engineering study because that sounds big and expensive and formal. If it's simply great idea, we're happy to fund it, work with the police to decide or whomever, to, I mean, it, the residents can't take town property and, and install it somewhere. I mean, it has to be done with and through a town. Let me, try, so. let me, let us try to do some wording, you know, staff involved in decisions about location, you know, rather than call it a, a giant thing. And then people can re react to that. Um, and I see Sandy's hand is up. So I, I just lowered it because I, I was going to say what you just said. <laughs> But I just said staff will be involved in decision. And then Yeah, I mean I I think you any of these things you we haven't had a process where where uh DPW and police have really looked at this stuff. If we put a certain amount of money in for traffic calming and signs, it would allow departments then to move forward during the year. Uh and in the report you can make specific reference to these ideas and ask them to take a look at them. Anna? I, I'm guessing that what we're going to get back is, can you please be more specific about what staff involvement means? Um, because I think we've dealt with this with safety zones right now, where they're saying um, a, a traffic study, like they'll say a traffic study was done, which means a police or a speed study, excuse me, was done, which means a police officer did the radar gun, but they want an engineering study for something that is anything beyond just that lit sign, because they need to know about the flow of traffic and all of that. So I, I do think that they're going to come back and say, please be more specific, but uh, I think we could start with that. I'm just, I'm not anticipating that that's going to solve the, the issue that we're dealing with here, which is getting stuck in this circle of- We, we can try to write it- The problem is it's a difficult issue. No. There's no yeah, easy is. answers to these things. I know. And there are trade-offs. Um, they put speed bumps on one of the major roads next to my house, and now the other major road is full of traffic. So, you know- uh, Which is why we shouldn't do it willy-nilly. Like that's, I think that's- well, that's exactly right. That's and and that's why I, I do think JCPC is not the right place no. for people to come and ask for this. You do not want that headache. Charter, um, charter review. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think saying, you know, you've looked at this, at this point, if you're going to set aside some money and ask that this be looked at so that if DPW and police decide, okay, actually, it's a good idea, we can go ahead and buy some things, then they have the cash to do it. So I, so Sandy, you'll get back to us whether that 71 was a duplicate. Yes. And then if, if it wasn't, Bob, there is still, we could take it out of this extra sidewalk money. You know, we could make it 50 or, or 55 since the total of the two requests was 55. We don't have to go to 70. So we'll just open up a piece and try to word this in a way that makes everyone comfortable. <laughs> um, and let me just, I'll describe the process that we've, We've been under a time crunch in the past, so it's this isn't unusual. It's just a little bit later. So if we can get you a, a decent draft um, in terms of fairly literate, and I'll write a first version, have Anna go, Anna go through it. Then when we meet next week, if everyone comes prepared with line edits, verbal edits or something, I take them all and get to a final, but we don't have to meet again. We just get to a final that way. And this becomes a recommendation. It's a recommendation to Paul. We're not the decision makers here. <laughs> you know, with to the extent some of the rationale for what has happened since day one to day to this day is Sandy has gone out and gotten more information is making advice to us. So we can reflect that staff came back to us with recommendations that enabled us to get to very near to a well we're at a balanced budget for FY25 and the other the out years look good too and then we can focus on where there are question marks if if that and so so it will be when you get the draft I'll send it in word so people can mark it up if that they're more comfortable doing it that way those that aren't comfortable can get get come with comments any other way and there are there is a way of mushing everything together um 
that's probably more efficient than the way I do it. But, um, you know, since so it will be mainly did this, it capture our thoughts here um, on where we didn't have quite enough information or where we still need to know more about the out years. Um, does that the, does that process sound OK to everyone? OK. And to the extent, I mean, the minute takers have been amazing. I have to thank everyone. You know, the minutes are all now posted with Bob's. I sent them in today. So to the extent the description of the project is in the minutes, um, I will borrow from that. Um, and, and for people to say, I'm not sure that's what I heard. The, the Zoom is out there. It's, Zoom is just painful to try to figure out at what point in the conversation, whatever you're interested in was being discussed. But the, the Zoom, for all meetings, Zoom has been posted. I just checked that today too. So I think I'm just checking to see if we have any, we do not have any public. So there will be no public comments because there are no public. And Sandy is here and Jen stayed with us. Jennifer stayed with us the whole time. Lee is has a hand up. No, didn't mean to. And you're muted. So I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I'm always muted. I will do my best to get the minutes for today to you tomorrow. If okay. that would be helpful. You know, and anyone, and and feel free to ship them to everyone. I mean, they're useful to me because I'm I'll be drafting. Um, and Sandy, do you does does everything make sense to you? I mean, I have some notes, but you probably took notes as we went along, correct? Yeah, and you're muted. Oops. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I uh, I had some internet problems all of a sudden, so I had to get on on my phone. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it all makes sense. I'll look into those unresolved issues. I will give you a redone draft um, with the numbers we talked about, and um, obviously contact me individually if you have any other questions. Otherwise, I think we're in good shape. Okay, and and what I've had, what we have included is the summary table, and then. We now have this very nice five year of all the projects, so we can just decide whether we're sending all of that through or not. Um, you know, Sean always, Sean and or other staff, I never knew who did this, figured out a way of how to get these big documents into one document, you know, bring them in, um, since some of them are horizontal and some of them are portrait. But in any case, well, I, I won't worry about that because this is just going up to Paul. So as long as he sees where we where we landed. I know how to do that, Kathy. I can help you out. Great. Thank you. So I want to thank everyone. And it is, I think we're amazingly, we're ending in time again. I just want to offer up my personal thanks to Sandy. Sandy, you've done a tremendous oh, job. Sandy, it's amazing. It together for us. And I really appreciate <laughs> it. JCPC was always my favorite committee when I worked for the town. So. <laughs> <laughs> No, you've been amazing, Sandy. I just can't. I can't even imagine with what what you had to start with, which is, <laughs> I I think I have all the proposals. Not quite sure. Not, Evidently not. not. Sure. Exactly. And I lo I loved it when you said I've got Sean's spreadsheet, but I'm not exactly sure what he was linking it to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So so thank you very much. I mean, you've still got a lot. For the final report, we've always put the, you know, the other things that we've seen in pieces, the vehicle list and some of this other stuff has been in Paul's final report. Um, mm -hmm. And we, we didn't spend any time talking about that because there's not enough to talk about anyway, but uh, that's been an innovation that's much appreciated by the town to see all the vehicles we own. Um, so. Yep, no, which I've, I, you know, I did send an updated version to you guys, so it, it is now current. Okay, great. Thank you all. And we are adjourned at need five minutes. Of about, don't we need, need a mo to motion to adjourn? I, I saw. Oh, that. right. Thank you. Second. Okay, <laughs> quick, a quick vote. Thank you, Bob. Bob. Yes. Kathy's a yes. Lee. Yes. Eugene. Yes. Sarah. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. Anna. Hi. <laughs> We are adjourned and thank you both. And thanks thank to all you. the staff that are Thanks, behind everyone. The too. Good Go night. On. Good night. Bye.